Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Hello there. Thank you for watching today's screencast from TeacherCast University. This is the fifth video in our online series called Kid Blog, an introduction to blogging with your students. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and I am the host of the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. In today's look at kidblog.org, we will talk about the new post system and show you how to create dynamic content for your classroom portfolio. You can see here that I'm already logged into my classroom blog. To create a new post, we must click on the blue button on the top that says New Post. Kidblog now supports a brand new visually dynamic post editor. Students now have a complete creative control over the look and feel of their posts. Let's take a look at some of these options. We first want to give our post a title. For this post, we will call it TeacherCast Test Post. The next thing we can do is add a unique header image by clicking on the button that says Add Header Image. Once clicked, KidBlog will open the new media library as described in our previous videos. In the media library, either choose an existing image or import a new one for your post. Under our blog header and post title, we have the dynamic kid blog post editor. Let's add some content to this section and discuss how your students can use this area to create dynamic digital content. When creating your blog post and importing text into kid blog, you want to make sure that you're using the visual editor tab. In a separate video, we will be discussing the HTML tab in great detail to show you how to embed great content such as videos, audio, and other Web 2.0 content. Let's look at the menu items from left to right. By highlighting a section of text, you can use the Size tab to adjust the size and height of your text. This is the best way for you to create blog headers and separate your various paragraph settings. To the right of the size button is the text color button. To change the color of the font, you simply highlight the text you wish to transform and click the text color button to adjust the color. To the right of the text color button, you will find the buttons for bold, italicized, and underline. To clear these and any other font styles, simply highlight your text and click the T button to clear all of your text styles. Next to the clear text style buttons, we have our buttons for bullet points and numbering. Further to the right, we have our justification buttons. To justify a paragraph to the left, right, or center, simply highlight the entire paragraph and click one of these buttons. Next, we have these two buttons which look like circles with arrows pointing to the left or right. These are your undo and redo buttons. Remember to tell your students where these buttons are and how they work, as it may save them time and energy if they make mistakes. To the right of the redo button is our link to URL button. To create a hyperlink, simply create or highlight your text and enter the URL of a website you wish to link it to.
Integration with your Google Drive accounts is available for the teacher premium account subscribers. This type of premium account provides a great marriage between Google Apps for Education users and KidBlog and allows teachers and students to find and use materials they have already saved on their cloud drives. The last button in our menu is the Upload button. This button is useful for uploading images you wish to use in your blog post or for retrieving your images already placed in your media library. Once you have your blog post complete, students can scroll to the bottom and change the background color of their posts. They can also change the texture of the background as well. To the left, we have additional fonts for our title and for our actual blog post. Lastly, no blog should be complete without adding two pieces of metadata. It is important to teach your students all about tagging and categories when sharing KidBlog with them. There are three options at the top of your blog editing screen that are very important to know about. These buttons are Draft, Review, and Post. The Draft button is the most important of all of these buttons. It is a good idea to teach your students to hit the Draft button several times during the creation of a blog post to save your work. You never know when a page might need to be refreshed and content may be lost. I generally get my students into the habit of saving their posts every few minutes. The Review button is for last minute, final checking of your blog post. This is going to show you what the post will look like as soon as you hit the publish button. Finally, when your blog post is ready for prime time, click the publish button and you are good to go. Once the publish button is hit, you are presented with a variety of audience choices. Blog posts can be selected to be seen by only the teacher account, your classmates account, blogs who have been connected with your class blog, or the entire internet at large. Once your selection has been made, hit the publish button to release your posts. We can see here that our blog post is now published and on your homepage for viewing. The complete video series to this online course can be found on our website, teachercast.net slash learn kid blog. I hope you take a moment to browse this and all of our online tutorials over at teachercastuniversity.com and teachercast.net. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, click on the like button below and leave us a comment. If you wish to receive more videos from TeacherCast, please click on the subscribe button on the top left of this video box and visit TeacherCast.net for more information about Google and other great educational tools. Don't forget to catch TeacherCast Live every Sunday night at 7 p.m. as we bring you the Tech Educator Podcast on TeacherCast.tv. We want to take a moment here and say thank you to everybody out there who's watching or listening to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. There's, of course, several great ways that you can participate in TeacherCast each and every week. We love it when you find us on Twitter, at TeacherCast. Like us on Facebook over at TeacherCast.net slash Facebook. Subscribe to our many audio channels and video channels over on iTunes. Email us at feedback at TeacherCast.net. Find us on Pinterest. And, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel at TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. The TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. What do you want to learn today?